I've been charged with talking about the management of meniscal root tears, and I share some of the statements stated by my, my former individuals who have been discussing things today about preservation of the meniscus. The meniscal root is a beast if you leave it uh, because it effectively deems the meniscus completely incompetent. This has been shown by multiple studies, Laprade, Dr. Levy, Dr. Stewart, as well as others. Um, as, this is a very brief slide, which most of you already know, that obviously the medial lateral menisci uh, serve a very important role, and that's distribution of pressure forces across the tibial plateau. There are many types of root tears, uh, specifically these, uh, partial complete radial root, complete radial root tear off the ligament, oblique tears, the root avulsion fractures, all of these deem the meniscus incompetent. And there's a subtype, which I'll talk about today, which Dr. DiMardino uh, beautifully described earlier, but I'll go into a little more detail. So this is an example of the avulsion fracture, actually. Uh, this is a patient of mine, and the Arthrex uh, flip cutter offers a very good opportunity to actually dunk this in and drew, uh, do a true arthroscopic reduction, internal fixation, like you would a spine. What are the consequences of a root tear? Well, the consequences are significant in the medial meniscus, especially in that individual who has genuverum and overload on the medial compartment. They're very dependent on their medial meniscus, and a, a root tear on the medial side that's not fixed is a disaster for them. We've looked, previous studies have looked at the consequences of these root tears, and if you look at these, uh, this end of, oh wow, this is gonna be tough. So if you look at the actual pressure distribution in a root avulsion here, you can see a complete pressure increase in this specific area as opposed to an anatomic root repair, which demonstrates an almost complete reduction and elimination of the pressure distribution back to a normal anatomic state. I'm a big fan of case examples of what these types of things do. So this is a patient of mine, a 37-year-old female CrossFit trainer. She had a direct axial load with hyperextension of her knee. She was able to train but had continued medial joint line pain. Here you see the go sign, uh, complete medial root tear. And this individual is not morbidly obese. She's a very high level athlete and she, she trains as a trainer, as a fitness, and that is her job. So in a female with this problem, this is a very significant issue. The, uh, in this case, this is what it looks like, and this is demonstrating the actual repair. And fortunately, Arthrex has given us very, a, a number of different instruments to allow us to treat this effectively with minimal intraarticular trauma. This is the meniscal scorpion, which allows me to put two close half-hitch sutures, luggage tag technique, on the medial meniscal root. The medial root is very hard. If you saw many of my colleagues, a lot of the pictures you see are the lateral root repair because you can see it. Unfortunately, medial meniscal roots in this individual is very hard to see because the medial side is so close and tight. You can do a small opening uh, percutaneous uh, MCL release if you need to, and I do that not, uh, not uncommonly, uh, but in this case, we didn't need to. This is using the flip cutter. It's a six millimeter flip cutter with the over-the-top guide, which Dr. Stewart and others helped develop with Arthrex, which gives us a very close anatomic uh, root re uh, repair with respect to the position of the drill followed by the flip cutter, and that allows us to dunk it and do a true anatomic repair. The, uh, and I use a transosseous technique with respect to a button on the antral medial aspect of the tibia, although it can be done with a, with a suture anchor as well. I find the transosseous technique allows me to tension it better and it improves my visualization. Um, what about the lateral meniscus root? Well, evaluation of the lateral meniscus root tear shows similar issues. I evaluation with three different signs, the cleft, the ghost, and the truncated triangle sign when used simultaneously allows a very high speci specificity and sensitivity. That being said, it still leaves 10% that are completely missed. And if you don't have a very good radiologist and are not meticulous in your evaluation, your MRIs, you can miss these. And if you don't pay close attention to your arthroscopy, you can miss these. And I'll show you a unique opportunity to allow us to evaluate these in the office. What about the lateral meniscal root repair? Well, in ACL transected knees, transection of the lateral meniscal posterior root led to increased internal tibial instability, um, as well as, which was most specifically at 60 and 90 degrees, transection of the meniscal femoral lig ligament further increased the instability. So it pr produces an instability rotational decrease as well, and repair of that may reduce that, and this study suggested that it in fact did. So what about evaluation of these tears? Well, I would suggest this is a very good opportunity for the nanoscope, specifically both for evaluating it as well as treating it. 
the medial meniscal root can be very hard to visualize in tight knees. As you see in this picture, this is the nanoscope visualizing the medial side, and I'll show that again in a second. It also bends. So as far as the cartilage damage that can occur, the scope trauma, when you're trying to slide back into that to view the medial root, you can either percutaneous release the MCL or use the nanoscope. So this is an evaluation, arthroscopic, looking at the nanoscope, using my scope and the nanoscope to show this visualization. This is the lateral compartment visualizing through the nanoscope. You can easily see the lateral root. This is the MU guide. You can also see the root guide. It's a very easy view. Now, the, this is the medial side. Here's the MU coming through and looking back. That is the view you get of the medial root. You can't get that with a normal scope. That's sliding all the way past the PCL um, without any scope trauma whatsoever. So augmented visualization can be helpful. Another case of mine, this is a semi-pro, excuse me, a pro skier heli ski in Alaska, and I asked him how he had his injury. He said, I'll just show you. So he pulled out his phone uh, and showed me the, uh, the injury. I was surprised he was coming in with the small injury that he had, uh, and I used small in quotations given the mechanism. So this is a person who had a previous ACL reconstruction, and he came in, in addition to his ACL, he had a lateral meniscal root tear. And again, these can be missed if you're not really careful in terms of evaluating them. It's harder to see this than it is the medial root. So what about a repair? Well, again, using the very minimally invasive techniques with the instruments that Arthrex has provided, in this case, the meniscal scorpion, two half-hitch sutures luggage tag technique are then placed in the root. And this is actually a ligament avulsion, so you can see the ligament side of this uh, where it's avulsed off the root. In this case, because it's done with an ACL reconstruction, I'm not using the flip cutter here because I don't want the tunnels to converge. Instead, I'm using the standard 3-0 drill with a nitinol wire, taking the uh, suture retriever, grabbing them all, and dunking it down, doing a direct osseous repair in a transosseous technique prior, follow, prior to which uh, I repair that and follow it with the ACL reconstruction. So in both cases, you can do a very, very simple, easy, high-strength high construct, both with and without ACL reconstructions. Last but not least, their lateral meniscal root tear equivalent. So the, Dr. DiBardino showed this br briefly, but I would suggest this is, a, a very, this is the equivalent of a root tear. Uh, now, whether or not these should be repaired, I would suggest to you that they should. More studies needed here. What about the increase in contact pressure? Well, the uh, contact pressure significantly increased in this cadaveric study, and repair restored those contact pressures and recruit, re restored the contact pressure area. This is what it looks like on MRI. So you see the split. The meniscal femoral ligament attaches to the lateral side of the meniscus with the root being attached, but no longer contiguous with the remaining meniscus. How did these repair it? Again, Arthrex with the meniscal scorpion has given us a unique opportunity to repair this very easily. You can either do a rip stop technique or a side to side repair depending on the integrity of the tissue. In this case, I'm using the scorpion. I grab the, the small nubbin which is attached to the root. It pulls the stitches away from my visualization. Then I go lateral to it. Again, pass it, rotating the meniscal scorpion because it's so small without any chondral trauma. And then reduce it and tie standard knots on the root side so it's less articular in nature. I do two half hitch, uh, two sutures side to side, giving a very uh, tight and appropriate anatomic reduction of that lateral meniscal root. How do these patients do? Well, we can rely on our SOS data to look at that. Meniscal root repairs demonstrate improvement in the global VAS, VAS scores as well as the glo global coos womax scores, improvements across the board uh, in reasonably long-term follow-up. I would suggest if this is a patient who is treated, 57-year-old female, BMI of 34, had a root repair, a micro -no notch microfracture, non-weight-bearing for six weeks. She was seen at three months. She then moved to Utah and followed up with me. She was put in a medial and loader brace and sent to physical therapy and came back to, s to see me when she she was not feeling better. This is what her x-rays look like. She has medial joint space narrowing, early osteophyte formation. Her MRI demonstrates evidence of medial plateau overload. She has chondral damage on the tibia and a complete rupture of her medial meniscal root repair. So I would suggest this probably what should not have been repaired uh, in the first place. That being said, we can debate about that on the panel. Thank you all.